Yay. We have a Netflix star on the show. That's all I'm going to say. Two times. I'm very honored he's here. Ah, uh, we've had this flair on the show, but uh, I just have to say that uh, due to his popularity, he tends to choose what time he rolls into the studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tell you three o'clock, but then you come three o seven. But it's okay, it's fine, it's fine because you are two time Netflix special, <laughs> Doctor Jason Leung. Uh, for all the listeners out there, I have to say that uh, Jin is very patient uh, because <laughs> actually, uh, behind the scenes, uh, I actually requested to be on this podcast <laughs> to, pro- to promote my Netflix special. That's the so only- I asked him to have me on and I came late. <laughs> it's okay. Yes. It's all right. Because when there's something on Netflix, I can ride on Jason's popularity while you still can. Mm. Yeah. See, it's always a business investment that I have to make. Just in case you become Hollywood famous, I can say, haha, I've had it on my show. Yes. More than twice. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, yeah, but I, congratulations. So for those of you who don't know, I walked into Gene's uh, studio and to walk into Gene's studio, you have to bypass his office. <laughs> His office is like, there are like 100 people, <laughs> minions <laughs> making money for him. You know, he does r- videos, campaigns and everything. He's like the top of the social influencer marketing game. And not once has Jin hired me to do anything for him. Okay. I like to say, I see the thing is, mm. I cannot use the excuse of Jason Leung's expensive because Jason Leung said that price is never the issue over here. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's the, the, the issue is nobody likes me. Nah, nah. <laughs> To be on your or to be on the campaigns. Okay, great. Thanks, man. I'm so glad I came on this podcast. Okay, we are just. Put- <laughs> oh, hey. You are the first Malaysian to have two Netflix specials on for stand up comedy in Malaysia. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's a bit nebulous that title because I am the first from the Southeast Asian comedy circuit. Ah. Uh, but actually, Ronnie, if you want to be technical, Ronnie Chang is Malaysian. Yep. Uh, still, apparently, mm-hmm. allegedly. And yes, <laughs> he has uh, two specials on Netflix. One is Asian Comedian Destroys America and last year, uh, Speak Easy. Yeah. So he technically has two, but you know, I, I would like to think that we are, we come from... So you think you're Ronnie Chang now? Lah. No, no, no. no, no <laughs> <where>. <laughs> I wish I was Ronnie Chang. Yeah, we all uh, wish we were Ronnie yeah. Chang. <laughs> Hi, Ronnie. Hey, Ronnie. Hope you're listening. Yeah. Uh, I heard your friends with Ronnie. Yeah, 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 I mean, no, we, we, we came from two different comedy scenes. Like he, yeah, yeah. he cut his teeth in Melbourne uh, and then now he's in uh, Hollywood. And I've, I've always been performing in mostly Malaysia, you know, but I'm, I'm trying to expand to other countries, of course. But it's two different things, you know, like yeah. if you watch the comedy scene in America versus here, we, it's very different. Our scene here is still growing, whereas the comedy scene in America is, is I would say, very matured. Yeah. very savvy audience that we have so we're still trying to educate our audience so it's very different yeah over here I mean like of course like lately you set up comedians have to be a bit careful because apparently uh, mm. apparently you can't simply joke about things I mean we could always we, we always couldn't simply joke about things yes, yes, yes. Uh, I've spoken this many times like we have the unspoken four R's that we cannot touch upon yes. especially in media and of course public in, in public speech like uh Four R's are royalty, Rosma, <laughs> race, and religion. Now, it sounds like a joke. But this was really the un- unwritten rule back in the day. Uh, but now, you know, I don't joke about Rosma anymore. Yeah. Uh, I don't joke about... I've never, ever joked about uh, <laughs> royalty. I have mm-hmm. no jokes about religion or, or race. Yeah, because, you know, I, I, we, we talk about race quite a lot. Yeah. But apart from that, yeah, it's... the Since last year, when my friend Rizal got arrested, crack house was shut down, uh, the morale has gone down. We are a bit careful now, but the essence of stand-up comedy is still there and a lot of people are coming out to support, a lot more people are coming out to support stand-up comedy because you never know when it might be taken away from you. Oh yeah, yeah. true. But then again, I, I, I believe that all stand-up comedies now are more smarter with their jokes. Oh yeah, I, I don't know about, <laughs> I don't know about smarter. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some really shit ones. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, stop talking about yourself, like Jason. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, shit, shit flick special. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we, are, we have to be, I, I have to get, we have to be a bit more smarter. Whether or not we are smarter is a totally different thing. Um, but I think the silver lining is that now more people are taking upon themselves to do more sh- 
individual stand up comedy yeah shows. actually there's a lot more shows being promoted online these days because yeah. I see a lot of ads nice 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 yeah, yeah. so it means that people are, they stop relying on crack house and yeah, yeah uh, doing their own shows because yeah it's in different shows. different places uh, pop up shows yeah. uh, pop up shows mm-hmm. and which is cool and uh um, obviously, I know for a fact that every in Malaysia, every uh, re- dinner, company dinner will always have stand-up comedy. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that's the thing. Interestingly, in Malaysia, uh, corporate events they we they they like to hire stand-up comedians because mm-hmm. the best synchronized drinking, by the way. Yes, exactly. Both of us taking a sip of this bottle over here, which is not sponsored by Spritzer. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast, sponsored. it's not. Yeah, it's not. Not, not sponsored by Spritzer. Yeah, but, but maybe if the more we do this. Ah, ah, Spritzer may want to sponsor. Ah. Exactly. So if uh, if Spritzer would like to sponsor Jason Long, could you please go through my company? Yeah. Then at least I have a reason I, I, to hire no, no, you. No, no, and then and then no, no, Spritzer will sponsor podcast, and then the podcast he won't get me. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get other people. No, Jason will charge me <laughs> his price. I will mark up four hundred percent. Thank you. Yeah, it's okay. I think we're being transparent. Transparency is all very good. Important. It's bo- It's important. New, ah. new government transparency is always good. And if, <clears> if Jean hires me, it's okay because Jean is not my father. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, how you do it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so stupid. No, no but uh, where were we? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I I what, what are we talking about? I don't know. I'm looking at our producer. What the hell are we talking about just now? Crack house. Oh, crack house. Yeah, it's not only crack house that, you know, pop up and pop up since Oh, no, no. It's, uh, corporate events. Yeah, no, corporate uh, events, yes. It's always like... Uh, Corporate events are obviously like stand-up comedians because number one, we are actually very easy to manage. We're yeah. just one person. Yeah. Logistically, there's no there's no band or uh, there's no mu- moving of musical equipments. Our rehearsals are much easier. But having said that, if the crowd is good and the stand-up comedian is on form, yep. the whole night will be memorable by the stand-up comedian. People go, hey, remember the annual dinner last yeah, year? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the one, remember you when you got Jason or the, the one where you got uh, Harry, the one you got Douglas? I, uh, uh, the one that really made fun of you when yeah, you were yeah, laughing yeah, so exactly. loud. Yeah. They, they remember the event based on the stand-up comedian's performance. So it, it's uh, very... Uh, it says the energy, in my honest opinion. Yeah. People, because they, uh, I think stand-up comedians are never the end of the corporate dinner. They're always the... Like I was the first, second meal, so boom, hey, surprise, we got this guy. Yeah, the strategy is always before the lucky draw. Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> because people leave doing a lucky draw, so like unless uh, of course you're giving out, uh, you know, a very luxurious price, then people will stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But most people don't stay, man. <laughs> uh, I, I recently I was uh, due to give a speech, not not perform, but due give give a speech at a friend's wedding. Uh huh. And for some reason, they decided it was a good idea to put me at the very last, <laughs> right? And but the the groom speech was in the middle, and he 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 gave a wonderful thirty minute speech about his life and his friends, and it was very moving. It was mm-hmm. awesome. And I thought, like, I should have gone before him because after this, no one cares anymore. Oh shit! And true enough, when he gave the speech, half the people left. Fuck. Yeah. I so, thought. So, so, I so thought. No matter how great or funny or the stand-up comedian is, you must always put him or her before the main event. At a, in a wedding, it's before the groom speech or the, the bride speech, and any other event is before the lucky draw. Right. You put anyone after lucky draw, nobody cares. If you, you can put, you can put Jesus himself. <laughs> After the lucky draw, the second come in, no one cares. People go back home. Cause why jam later. So no, no, it's okay, but because you know you can reach Jesus anywhere. You <laughs> no, but so he comes back again. You know, in, in form, he comes back again. <laughs> the event that everyone's waiting for, he decides to come back again. You know, at uh, this bank's annual dinner, at <laughs> Sheraton or whatever, and they're there. Uh, no man, uh, lucky draw. I, I win prize, there, I go home. That's it. Wow. Malay, you, you can put anyone lose to Malaysians after a lucky draw. Yeah. Hey, mm. but not bad, uh. I should say that if I could be a stand-up comedian, I want to because you know why? I was uh, hosting a dinner that night. As a host, you You're get the MC. Ho- yeah, I was the MC. You still do MC? I don't, but you know, uh, so due to special requests, which means sucking to the sucking up to the client, so ah. that he give me more jobs. Right. I do some corporate events. You, uh, you, you pick and choose, which is good, lah. Yeah. You, you, you is 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 a good is a good position to take to pick and choose because unlike some sometimes I end up taking all the gigs, which is bad. <laughs> I should pick and choose. So anyway, you saying? Yeah. And it's like, okay, you host a, a, a gig, a corporate gig, it's great. You get the whole night. Nice, yeah, nice, you know, you set the energy, whatever, not. And then I, I, there was one corporate gig I was hosting and I, I bumped to Douglas Lim. And I was like, oh, hey, Douglas, how are you, man? Long time no see, whatever, not. And then he's like, hey, bro, uh, whatever it is, uh, his manager, uh, give it to me. Whatever it is, he must finish by 9.17. Hilarious. 9.17, he's <laughs> off stage. Then I'm like, oh, wow. Uh, what if we, we basically a bit like, you know, 9.18? No, 9.17, off stage. <laughs> 
Then I'm like, no problem. And he went up there, he performed, killed the crowd and killed everything. It, yeah. Killed it, 917. Boom, he was off stage. Right, right, right. And I was like, wow, not bad, man, you know. And but he did, he did his full set. Like, he I mean, did his, he did his full right, set. Right, 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 okay, okay. Then I was like, wow, what, what's up, man? Good, 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 nice, uh, nice one, you know. What's up, going home? Uh? No, I'm going to my next one. I'm yeah, like, baby. Holy shit. I was like, yeah. how many you have tonight? Three. I was like, Woo! oh. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah, um sometimes that happens. Uh we, we we call it, you know, we have to play tango, we get two clients at, at the same night. It happens. So and and, and for stand up comedians in Malaysia it becomes very lucrative. Yeah. Because you earn a lot in a short amount of time mm-hmm. and then you can do like you said, uh, once or twice a night, which is which, which is great money and you can pay your bills. Um I've had it done. I've done it before where you have to do like, you, you do sound check at venue A. Yeah. Then you go to venue B and mm. venue, venue B show starts first. Then you can you have to rush back. I, I had to take like grab or I've, huh, I, that's the only time I valet park. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you pay me today? Okay, enough to valet park. Yeah, exactly. exactly, exactly. I, I, because if I, if, I, if I miss the gig, I lose a lot more. So, <laughs> um, but, but having said that, although it's lucrative, what is important to know for, for any stand-up comedian is like, you cannot just do that. Yeah. You have to Write your write new jokes, write new material, tour, put yourself out of your comfort zone, mm-hmm. and continue doing the art for the art for the sake of the art, not just for the sake of the money. Yep. If you do it just for the sake of money, right? Guess what? You will never become better to make more money. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. you will never be. You, you, there's a shelf life, lah. Yeah, yeah, there's a shelf life, and then if you don't, I mean, even when it comes to what do you do, like production or YouTube, whatever. If you don't upskill yourself, you don't learn new skills, you don't keep up to date. You're gonna fall off the, the you're gonna fall off the lad, fall off the ladder. So you gotta keep climbing. Gotta keep doing shows, new shows, new jokes, new hours, new specials. That that's the name of the game. Yeah, government contracts and. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but see, get the government contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also do other stuff for 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 the sake of art, lah. Yeah, sub know? it out, you know, and then you just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, no, 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 no. Sub it out to a skill. No, I'm kidding. I'm all jokes here. All <laughs> oh, jokes lah. You see, when, jokes you have, la. when you have a stand-up comedian on the show, you always have this pressure to be funny because every laugh that comes off from the stand-up comedian as as we speak right here, Jason Leong, it's a, uh, it's assurance that to me that I'm quite funny. No, but I think I think you do have some comedic chops. You have a, you mean your video started comedy? Shut up lah. I asked you one night. Hey, do you think I can be a stand-up comedian? Your answer, please don't. Yeah, see. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, so I did say that. So, I mean, uh, I, I've always thought you had comedic chops because you, your video, you, you started YouTubing funny what? Funny, funny videos, right? Yeah, so, but the thing is, it's just because my face is funny. Yes, that too. That helps. <laughs> that helps. No, that helps. So I always thought that, so he once, Jin once asked me, hey, uh, should I, should, what do you, what's the exact question? Can, I said, hey, do you think, can I or be, can I, should, should I or can I be a stand-up comedian? Yeah, because, okay, let, back story a bit. After Jason told me uh, how he made 49 million uh, just on six shows internationally, I said, hey, I want it in. I was like, how can I be a stand-up comedian? And then next question, do you think I have what it takes to be a stand-up comedian? And his reply was, please don't. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I said, don't. I said, you, I didn't say you don't have talent. <laughs> don't lah. I mean, bro, he's really making so much money elsewhere. Hey, Shana, Enough lah. Leave this. Stay in your lane lah. Leave this. <laughs> Leave this to us lah. What bullshit is like, oh, the back, like, hi, I would like to grow the stand-up comedic scene. Hey, Jason, do you think I can be one of the things? Please don't. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> fuck you. That's true. Then, don't just... eat the pie, okay? <laughs> the pie is mine. No, no, we are growing the pie for <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's funny. Like, we put it in this layer. <laughs> grow the comedy scene. Fuck you, Jason. Don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but um, it, it's, it's quite surreal to for you. Like one day I'm messaging him and this is no joke. Uh, I will be talking to him one day and say, oh, I'm having a show in Penang. And then the next day you're flying to UK. And right. then the next day you'll uh, be in Indonesia. And then yeah. the next day you'll be in Singapore. What the hell is going on? Oh yeah. So I'm just trying to uh, tour in other countries uh, bit by bit, you know. Um, my heroes in comedy, like like Ronnie. Yeah. Like he, he tours extensively. Uh, it's a great kind of life to have to tour around the world he's just like a rock star rock star gig ah. in a way like in a way I mean I mean rock stars sell out stadiums yeah. but, but, but you know people like Ronnie are on the way there uh, Nigel Ng's on the way there you know he said he, he just recently concluded. okay sorry Jason's just trying to be very humble he sold out Esplanade Singapore yeah, yeah. okay it's not yeah, about yeah. selling out Esplanade Singapore can you imagine the amount of Malaysians they had to pay three times the price to watch Jason Leong in Singapore. Esplanade. Yeah, there yeah. are a lot of them there. Hey, congratulations, by oh, the way. Thank you. I love this uh, sound prompt. 
Um, yeah, so touring overseas is like I say lah, you know, a good way to put yourself out of the comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I want to do that more often now, you know. And you mentioned corporate gigs earlier, and it it. it Corporate gigs has always been the main source of, source of my comedy income. Yeah, but this year I want to make touring the biggest source of my income as an artist. Uh? as an artist, so that so that I don't have to rely on corporate gigs, so that I can pick and choose if I want. You know, I don't want to just be in a position where I do corporate gigs till I'm 50 years old. Oh, you know, I want to do other things. Do 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 art for art, and if I get paid well, then yes, you know, I love to get paid well for for doing art. But what I realized also, right, because I've been following for so many years, your jokes have also changed. Because it was a lot more local. Yeah, uh, yeah. I would say, Claire, let's just rewind back at least three, just three years. Uh, three years to three, four years. Your jokes were a little bit more local. Yes, yes, yes. But then when your first comedy special came out of yes, Netflix, yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> I've seen the set before. Yes. But the thing was, when it was edited for Netflix, it was more international appeal. Different. It, it was in a way different. I was like, oh. Yeah. And uh, so this next new Netflix special, uh-huh. Is it more Malaysian flavor or more international flavor? Ah, so for okay, re- rewind back. The first Netflix special, hashtag blessed. I made a very conscious decision that all the jokes from A to Z, you yep. don't have to be Malaysian. Yep. To really get it. Right. Okay. Um, f- for right with caution, uh, there are some bits and pieces where you would and un- you would laugh a bit harder if you're Malaysian or say Singaporean. Yep. But you still don't have to be Malaysian or Singaporean to get it, you know? Uh, like there's a bit where I talk about the differences between Malaysia and Singapore politics and everything. Of course, you, if you know Malaysia, yeah. on Singapore, you uh, like it better. Yes. But the way I've set up the joke is you already know that there's a power difference between Singapore and Malaysia. Yeah, and politicians so, in general. Yeah, so there's the, uh, it's a skill that comes along where you you appeal to a wider audience, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, the danger is that you become too wide that... You don't really make anyone ha- anyone happy, right? You try right, and please right. everyone, you make no one happy. Ah. Uh, so 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 as time goes on and as I become more known, I can take a bit of a risk. More famous, yeah. I can <laughs> I can take a bigger risk. I can okay. I can be a bit more self indulgent and talk about Malaysia, and they may not be Malaysians, but they will follow me on the right. Right. Because as long as I explain a, explain a little bit. They would be, they would be roped in, you know. I kind I kind of feel that okay. So Ronnie is Malaysian, yep. but you know his jokes are very skewed towards the American people. Mm, yeah, yeah. He 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 has a very how to say a Western, I'll say Western point of view. Yeah. Of things, but he also comes from his own lived experiences, his own upbringing. The best thing about Ronnie's material is that he he has this ability to make. He said very, very current. Mm. Very, very in this year, what are people talking about? And he's going to make fun of that in his set. So it's very fresh, very, very trending, very, very relevant, very current. Yeah. So I like his shows. Like if you watch uh, Speakeasy, it's very 2022. Very RC. Very, and very in that moment, <clears throat> in that year, you know, it, it sums up the year very nicely. So I, I that, 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 that's a big strength. Like, whereas I think for me, right, with caution, not really. Um, uh, that current, but it's something that uh, I'm very proud of because it's the funniest things that I've thought of in that year. <laughs> you know, the funniest shows, uh, the funniest jokes that I've come up with in the last 2001, 2021 and 2022. So, yeah, mm-hmm. the only time when you all stuck at home. Lah. Yeah. But hey, so like this is your special, okay? So a, a lot of people tend to over. Uh, uh, okay, so. I know the stand-up comic fans will know the thought process and the build-up into basically producing a show or going uh-huh. on tour. Mm-hmm. But for those who don't know, mm. how long did it take you to basically film this? Oh, film this? I mean, I mean the lead-up to it. I know, no, no. So I started, I did my first one-hour show in December 2021. Yep. That's the one you, you came for. Yeah. Then I... I asked for a free ticket, you know, but idiot just sent me a link. <laughs> You see, how, you see how many people you have outside making money? Uh? Uh, <laughs> Enough, uh. That's okay, but you see, uh, that's, what, what I'm trying to say is, uh, friends support friends. Yes. Yes. Yes, and I uh, asked him to bring his whole office to come. Yeah. He brought himself. <laughs> it's a true story. It's a true story. Anyway, so uh, I started writing the jokes maybe like uh, June, July 2021. Then I did the first one hour show in December 2021. Then 2022, I started touring like, you know, Penang. Yeah. Uh, I did Australian circuit. Then London, Singapore, Kuching, Indonesia. So like, 
uh, and 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 we taped it in 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 Esplanade. So I would say um, the lead up is about let's call it a year lah. Oh wow, a year to, you know, and like for my next special. Yeah. So I started writing new jokes in September last year. Oh wow. And open micing. Right, right. And if I'm gonna tape it, it's gonna be taped in. Uh, July this year. Oh wow! So July plus September. So that's <coughs> almost almost uh, almost a uh, every year ten, ten one special. Of, yeah. Damn. The 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 profession the pros the pros in developed markets do it one new special every year. Oh really? Mm. So you're okay. So mm. you, that's you, how you build. Their, that's how they build such a big fan base. And you know, like in in America, once you have a good one hour, let's say, yeah, right, you can tour all fifty two states. Yeah. Right, and each state has two. Two cities, three cities. Yeah, your your whole year is done. Damn. Right. I just saw Nigel uh, wrap up his tour. And there was what one hundred ninety, one hundred nine cities. One hundred forty nine right? shows Jesus in. Jesus. Yeah. <coughs> so I was trying to do that's the, like one hundred fifty shows, right? Like if, yeah. If you do that in a year, yeah. That's a show. Uh, what? That's a show every three days. Uh, yeah. I don't know how he does it. He no, does no, that. that's a show every no every, every day, other yeah, day. Every yeah. A show every other, but he did over two years lah. But. I, Insane. Fourteen months he did it. My God. And like I was like, whoa! How does he do that and do the YouTube channel? He's still doing. You know, normally when people go on tour, like singers, you, mm. they'll be completely silent of social media. You, they just tour. Cause too busy, like. Yeah, too busy. But he does that and does YouTube. Mm. So when I saw him, like you know, when I saw him post 149 shows straight away, the Chinese in me took out my calculator. <laughs> and how much money? <laughs> and, uh, I was like, whoa! I, I like your honesty because I also I also took out my calculator. Yeah, I think, nah. we, I think we took out the calculator at the same time. Probably. I mean, yeah. And we calculated the same. <laughs> And then when the calculator could not fit the zeros, yeah. like, what? He buy this fucker, you know. And we always like to assume the ceiling. And then even though we want like, okay, I know he, you, 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 you doubt him. He's like, nah, nah, he couldn't make that much. And then you go to the bottom, bottom floor of how much he could possibly make. I'm like, wow. And and don't forget, uh, discounting his, you know, YouTube revenue. Yeah. He also sells merch. Yeah. Yeah, and and the thing is, when I see people like Nigel, and I go, okay, I wanna, I wanna work towards that because yeah. I feel. There is nothing better in life than touring, doing stand up, and and making a lot of money. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's the that's the that's the best life I can imagine. You know. Uh, yeah, I I still gotta give it to him though. Very humble guy. He's so nice. Yeah, He's just, the 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 best guys, are the humblest. Yeah, yeah. Myself, I am very humble. I when it comes to humility, I'm the best. The bastard. Don't don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> For more jokes like this, uh, watch my Netflix special. <laughs> Very good writing, right? Hey, what was your previous? <laughs> uh, sorry, the, so the last, uh, the last uh, special was hashtag blessed, mm. and then I think that 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 uh, hashtag or that uh, term came out of how uh, you were making fun of uh, these people taking their uh, pictures of their plane tickets, but in the background it's a business class yes, seat, and yes. then you know they they try to be humble but not. Yeah, hashtag they, blessed. They're actually not trying to be humble. They are bragging. <laughs> but they just couch they couch it in pretensions of humility. Let's let's be politically correct so that, how I can yeah. show my business class I, I seat. Re, I really hate people who show off. I'm, I'm being honest now. I hate people who show off. I hate them the most. And I think uh, people who not, nowadays, you know, I it's not I didn't touch upon this in hashtag blessed, but you know how like, oh, they, the guy will take a photo of like from while he's driving. But a photo of the steering wheel, and then the and then like he he wears like a Rolex, yeah. And then the car is like a Mercedes. But you can see the entire photo is the Mercedes logo, <laughs> the Rolex, and then a bit of the road. Are you to this so jam, man? <laughs> like go fuck yourself. I hope, I hope your car crashes. You know, like I I, I don't like people who show off. That, that's just I, I I just can't stand it. I, I really can't stand it. <laughs> And and this time, okay. Uh, if you don't see on, uh, well, obviously, if you're listening uh, to the show on Spotify, you you can't see. But I'm actually wearing uh, Jason's PR kit. Yes. I was contemplating on whether I should go all full on uh, skin suit today, but then I didn't want you to basically come in and walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So, <clears throat> so what Jin is wearing is my, my PR kit, and it's basically a bicycle helmet and with some stickers on it, like. Ride with caution on Netflix, and then there's a warning label that says, uh, "Warning, my skull may be hollow," and another one that says, "I cycle because I have no friends." Uh, see, okay, this is where I have to correct you. This helmet over here does not quite look like a helmet that the cyclists wear, lah. Okay, it's, what 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 do cyclists wear? Something a little bit more arrow, lah. Yeah, and this one looks more like a skateboard helmet. Can be, can be, okay, lah. This one can be a 
commuter by bicycle helmet. Uh, because it goes slow. I see. But ah. if you are going really fast, uh, you will buy the more expensive one. I see. How how expensive are the helmets? I think like one helmet could go up to maybe thousand five, thousand six. Thousand five ringgit. Okay. Yeah. How how expensive are the bicycles? The bicycles. <laughs> the bicycles can can go from two thousand ringgit all the way to seventy thousand ringgit. Seventy. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I I mentioned that I hate people like to show off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love it when I, when the producer is laughing. I love it. La. Shut up, la, no I fucking. Lo- I, love he, don't look. I love it when he's laughing. Uh, no, because nowadays there are a lot of people like to show off how much money they have, but it's a different way now. <laughs> now it's by cycling. <laughs> you know, like cycling and the, the, bikes, the bikes are 80, whatever, 50,000 ringgit and uh, expensive suits and everything. And, and the, 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 that's why I make fun of them la, because they are trying to show off. <laughs> and, but what is, <laughs> what, what, no, that is the funny part. There is the eh, Jessica making fun of them. Underlying that is the serious and personal what's the word worry at my friends, like like Jean over here, <laughs> who cycle and they don't realize, you don't realize how dangerous it is. I, I know, I, I know the dangers of cycling. <clears throat> Ah, that's for sure. Mm. Obviously, open road cycling, you are at the mercy of uh, Malaysian drivers. Yes. Ah. So you don't do open road cycling? I don't do open road cycling. Where, 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 where do you cycle? The motorbike lane. <laughs> <laughs> it's safer. The mo- motors, motorists are a lot more cautiously aggressive than Malaysian motor car drivers. You mean, you mean the motorbike riders? Yeah, motorbike are riders, more yes. cautiously yeah. aggressive. Yes. Right. But you see, you don't cycle open road. I don't cycle. Okay. Like, I cycle in my neighborhood, that's for one. Okay, that's fine. Okay. I cycle in the Kampong Roads when we are in a group. So you're going to harm the chickens? Sometimes the goats. Yes. And, and you say- No joke, I actually oh, yeah. almost ran into a cow. <laughs> no, really, no joke. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, serious, serious. <laughs> Imagine the cow's day. He's like eating grass and then this fucking Chinese bastard on a cyclist <laughs> cycle comes. What? Yeah. What happened? I, I, oh, I freaked out. Uh, because the cow was minding his own business, eating grass on the As left side. As cows do. Yeah. And then the thing is, the fast, the fastest I can go is maybe 30 kilometers per hour or 40 kilometers per hour, right? You may think it's ah, nothing because like, you drive in a car, it's slow. Actually, for a cyclist, it's actually damn fast. Mm. I don't know why, for some reason, I think because of the flashing light, the car just got up and decided to cross the road in the, in the speed of light. So inconsiderate, uh, the cow. But because of the equipment that I had and that I trusted and with the helmet that is very similar <laughs> to what you gave me, I was safe. Right. Yes. You know what would be safer or not? What? Don't cycle. Hey, don't lie. <laughs> uh, um, okay, so you say you don't cycle open roads. Yes. So the bis- motorbike lane that you cycle on, is it like a special lane that only is accessed by bi- motorbikes? Y- uh, see, this, uh, I cycle at GCE. I don't know why, for some reason, even the motorbikes don't cycle in the motorbike lane. They uh-huh. cycle on the main road. So the, the cars cannot just ram, ram, ram into you? Oh, cannot, cannot. There's a divider. But the thing, not saying that the car will be stopped by the divider. It's just safer lah. So I like I like I like to <laughs> I like to be safe because when I first got my bike the first month I crashed it once. And yeah, yeah, but 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 it was not due to my negligence. It was the act of God. Meaning? It was raining. And you still cycle lah? Yeah, because you know, so it's quite adventurous lah, you know, you cycle with raindrops coming in your face and then there's adrenaline. <sighs> <laughs> okay, sorry. There's no way I'm doing justice to try and save the cycling community, but no, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know what's funny? Like, uh, so, <laughs> so I, I do the show, right? Uh, spoiler alert! So I shit on this kind of cyclist a lot, yeah, a lot, a lot. And then sometimes, sometimes, like you see a bunch of friends, like <laughs> like in sitting, like sh- watching, and then like <laughs> and then they, they point to one guy. Clearly, he's a cyclist himself. Yeah. And then after the show, like in Melbourne, one guy came up and he said, and he said he came up. And, and he goes something along the lines of, don't trust me, I'm a pathological cyclist or something like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, but he's a, he, he wore that exact shirt to game. He had no idea that I was going to talk about it. And he was just, and he was cool. Lah. I yep. think the, the weird things, pe- and here's the thing, here's the thing, right? So last time in my special, I was shitting on people who like to show off their business class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Problem is my fans don't know or think that I'm really serious. Yeah. They think I'm making fun for fun. See, even though I clearly, like in the special, I say, I wish these people would show off. I hope the plane crashes and only they die. <laughs> That's what I said, right? But they think that I'm being poking fun. 
So now they they still like Ajason like they show off their flights and then Ajason they tag me like I I wish you die you know what I mean <laughs> you are showing off yeah. Hey, uh, but a friend of <laughs> a, a mutual friend of ours uh, he was <laughs> okay I'm gonna de- I won't say the name I'll describe the photo okay uh, the photo is of him clearly taken by someone else yep in a first class or business class flight where you know he's curled up in his bed. Watching TV, uh-huh. he, his he, his hands are in the photo, so he's, he's not holding the camera. Yep. Someone else took the photo of him curled up in business class. Yep. He takes the photo and then he uploads it. Uh, something like uh, so cool, whatever. Like, I can't remember the caption, right? And then some, they they start like his friends start to shit on him, like uh, yeah, hashtag black, hashtag black, blah, blah. and then and then then he texts me. He said, you know, I always post photos of my flights and no problem until. Jason Leong me came up with the the jokes, the jokes right? He thanks me. So then, how ah? Uh, then I say, just stop doing it lah. Like. Yeah. Stop showing off. <laughs> stop it. Why? Why? Ah, it's so. It's, and now, now, after people have uh, watched me live cheating on cyclists, yep, they don't stop. They go like they 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 cycle. Jason, you want to join us? And I'm like. Yeah, I think every time I cycle past Jason's house, I'll send a photo. Yeah, Hi. yeah he does. He does. <laughs> I take a selfie. Say, hey man, right in front. He, he does. He's in front in front of my my uh, condo. Like, yeah. Hey, Jason, wanna join us? Like, no, I wish you. Yeah. He's like, I wish you die. No, stop. Like, please die. Uh, He's like, please stop. Please stop. I always say, please stop. But you should try. You should try cycling once. For PR purposes, for your Netflix special, you should go out with a group of riders and experience what it's like to cycle. I I I, I kind of know what it's what it's like to cycle. Oh, you tried before. No, I cycle. Okay, in Dublin, uh-huh. I actually got around with the bike. Okay. Yeah, but but I that's w- a different bike though. That's like a commute bike, lah. That's like a, we call it the, like it's like a more like a mountain bike. Oh. I, I bought a bike off someone secondhand for ninety euros. Oh wow. Yeah, and then I had a helmet and everything, and it was uh, and I cycled in Dublin, so it was quite safe. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's different from the cycling now, like because uh, that was very utility cycling. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to now, this is just showing off cycling. It's a competitive cycling. Ah, no, it's competitive. Yeah, ex- sometimes, uh, sometimes. To see uh, who can get injured faster. No, 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 no. Okay, this is where I need okay, to okay, protect okay. cyclists a bit. <clears throat> yes, 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 yes. So I, I started cycling because I had a knee injury. I remember I was talking to you saying that, hey, uh, I got this pain that lasted for six months. I remember. Should I be worried about it? Mm. And you'd be like, oh, Jason. <laughs> it's so funny that Jason had, okay, he's, he's a doctor by profession, but he hasn't practiced for a while. But still, I will go to him and ask him questions with the risk of getting shit on. Mm. So then what for you advice. Oh. So he's like, okay, I think you better go get it checked. Uh-huh. So true enough, uh, when you get checked, uh-huh. doctor said, uh, I think I can't remember what a bone specialist is called. Is it a... Ortho- bo- orthopedic Orthopedic. I was about to say boner. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, then he told me that, okay, running, jogging is an impact sport. And I'm like, yeah. how is it yeah. an impact sport? Yep, yep, yep. So he explains, okay. la, the knee knock to each other, blah, 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 on a long uh, motion, uh, monotonous motion, it will, they will be wear and tear. Yes. Fair enough. Then after that, uh, then I told him that, look, uh, I'm trying to lose weight. I was 92 kilos. You look good now, by the way. Can thank I just you. Say? Thank you. Thank you. Hold on. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. So mm-hmm. you're now 80, 80, 80. I Okay. So I was 92. Yes. I went all the way down to 82. I lost 10 kilos. And now for some reason, I am hovering between 85, 87. Oh, you look great, man. Oh, thank you. Thank you. But then again, you didn't look bad at 92 because you're a tall fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't look bad at 92. No, that's the thing. Everybody kept thinking that just because, okay, you think you're overweight, maybe you're 92, but everybody will give you the excuse of, hey, it's okay while well, you're tall. Mm. So I learned it the hard way because I went for a full body checkup before getting the vaccine and the, and the person who was attending to me looked at me and laughed. <laughs> you might want to lose some weight. What a bastard. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, j- jokingly, la. I'm like, oh, why? Uh, I'm not tall, man. Tall enough. I'm tall. I'm okay. Are you going to say like, oh, it's okay because you're tall. It's like, uh-huh. no. You, you can't. Then he sent me down. Uh. He showed me my cholesterol. And then I sent Jason Leong my entire, <laughs> my full body checkup and you know, and he's like, oh yeah, your cholesterol is a little bit high yeah, and yeah, stuff like that. Now lower. Ah, it's, it's, it's lower. Then um, I got a little bit worried because my mom's diabetic. Mm. And then when you have all these uh, aunties and all, oh, yo, you know, your mom's diabetic, you be careful and stuff like that. And then uh, a couple with all everybody getting COVID and then the people who are diabetic who are at higher risk or heart disease whatever not scared me a little bit you know yeah, why yeah, because, yeah. and it will stick you the same as well it's because we became fathers yes and, and, and then we had friends our age who had heart attacks yes exactly and I believe one or two one of your friends yeah passed or passed, yeah. yeah so so I mean one will always yep yep, yep. Yeah, a little bit more cautious, worried. Yep. So that's why I, was like, I made a very uh, cautious decision to, all right, you know what? Whatever it is, I'm going to do what it takes to lose weight. Yep. Then I got a call from Jared. 
<laughs> Jared is our mutual friend, Jared and Marianne. And Jared said, hey, what's that girl? I was like, oh, yeah. He said it in the exact tone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, what's that girl? <laughs> then I'm like, oh, I, I actually, okay. So before I started cycling, I used to look at it as a rich man's sport. Yeah, because uh, apparently the bikes are not expensive. But again, they are cheap bikes. One doesn't necessarily have to go buy a $70,000 bike just to be fast. Okay, I agree. How much is your bike? <laughs> My bike is about, maybe about, all I spend on is about 30000 Okay. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> quite, quite, quite expensive. Huh? <clears throat> Right, ah, 30,000 is the entire starting salary of a uh, new grad. Uh. Ah, yeah. So anyways, <laughs> back to uh, Jared. So what we did was uh, we bought a cheap bike for like 1,005, a China made bike. And we Are you serious? You yeah, bought yeah, a 1,005 yeah. China? Okay, yeah, okay, and then okay. we started uh, a carbon also, okay? Okay, okay. And then we started uh, sharing it. It's like the village bicycle. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. So there's a group of four, five of us, okay? <laughs> and then there's always a spare bike. The I spare see. bike is used to kind of poison everybody else. Right, and right, I tried right. it the first time, oh, my I ass. See. The spare bike is to invite people to come along. Ah, yes, right, yes. Right, right. So my ass hurt like hell. Yes. And uh, the first, after the first time, I was like, oh, my back pain, neck pain, everything pain, you know. And in my, in my mind, I was like, what the hell? Uh, it's like, where was cycling? Like when I was a kid, yes, when yes, I cycled yes, a mountain yes. bike, it's fun. Exactly. This yeah. is yeah, pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then you'd be like, fuck lah, I don't want to do this. Uh. What the hell do I, okay, why okay, am okay. I paying, gonna invest enough yes, 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 money yes, to yes, do this? Yes, and yeah, yeah. Uh, then you go to a bike shop. It's like, it's normal. It means your body is adapting to the bike. Fair enough. Okay, cool. I'm sure, yeah. Then I went for the second ride. Sure enough, yes. no more pain. Right, my right, butt right. is still pain, right, but my right, back, right. no more pain. Right. Then I said, shit, this is quite fun lah. Is it is, 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 the, 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 is it because like the the whole bike frame is very rigid? There's no suspension. That's why you get okay. Because so last time the bikes we have got a bit of suspension. So uh, okay, the suspension one is is mountain bikes. The road oh. bikes they were talking about is more okay. Um, how rigid? Okay, the more money you pay, the more rigid the bike is. Oh, okay. How carbon fiber lah? Different grade of carbon fibers. Uh, why do people want more rigid bikes so that your power transfer of your legs to pedal ah. is more precise. How precise? But it's to more normal recreational ah, cyclists, it right, doesn't right. matter. To the pros, every second counts of course. to win millions of dollars. Right. So uh, then I, the, the thing is, the reason why I got so addicted to it was not of the fact that it was uh, like a flashing statement that, oh shit, I'm rich. When we rode around in that village bicycle, that China bike, <laughs> when one day we started cycling and we finished 30 kilometers and we was drenched in sweat, we were on top of a bloody hill and we were like, wow, this was cool. Yeah. Let's be irresponsible now and spend more money. Right. <laughs> and that's where I think uh, I got my first bike. Nice. Uh, Jared bought his first bike and Jared, Jared crashed. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he's not back on the bike now. He's, he's, no, he is. He's, he's back on the bike. So yeah, he's, he's back on the bike. Haven't learned his lesson. No la, I mean, he, he, he has to go through trauma. <laughs> he go through his trauma. He said he, his exact words. So when I started cycling, when I picked up a bike, and back then it's apparently, it's like buying a bike is like buying a Rolex called waiting okay. list one. I waited at least like five months, six months. I think because there's a shock, uh, supply shock. Right? Yeah, Everyone la. wanted to buy. Exactly. Yeah. Right, right. When I got my bike, three months in, I lost 10 kilos. Nice. And I felt great. Nice. And uh, I felt more confident. Then after that, I went to do a complete heart scan, everything. After picking up cycling, I became more conscious of my body. Mm. It's weird. I never thought of you as not confident. You said you, had, you were more confident after that. I never thought you were not confident. Oh, really? Yeah. You assume too much of it. Ah, I know it's the facade you put up. <laughs> I, yeah, I think so. Everybody mm. puts up kind of a... Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, but it's good. La. So now you cycle and then your knee, how? Uh, my knee, no more pain. No more pain. Yeah. Mm. It's it's completely fine. And then uh, now my wife is country. <laughs> do, you, do, do, you, do you watch videos where people complain about cyclists? Oh, yeah, I do. There's one video which is really funny, you know. So this guy is a POV of a guy who has driven off the... Like, towards the side yeah. to let the cyclist pass by yep, yep. and the cyclist still knock into him. <laughs> Why are cyclists like this? Okay, you see, see, these are the one, two, I won't say even say 1%, maybe 0. 0.00007% who, who, who gives give cyclists a bad, a bad name. name. Actually, to be honest, I don't even want to call myself a cyclist. Huh? I just do. Yeah. Recreational. Uh, re hobbies, re recreational. Uh, Right. I, I, would, I would say I'm an irresponsible recreational cyclist. Irresponsible in the sense I spend too much money on a bike that doesn't make me go fast. I see. It's, <laughs> but it's just nice to have the bike. Right? It's, not, it's like, how do I explain it? You know, some people buy Harley Davidsons 
or they buy their Honda S3, yeah? yeah or buy their Honda uh, Nissan Skyline ah, modified yeah buy their Honda Superbikes and yeah. it got different different grades one what 150cc 250cc 300cc obviously the more the higher the cc the more expensive yeah. and then they go for their joy rides yes 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 yes, yes. yeah in Malaysia it's hilarious because everyone's hot and they're wearing jacket yeah exactly yeah. so I see cyclists no jacket see Fair no. <laughs> and I think I think every hobby sounds ri- looks ridiculous uh-huh. to the to people outside not not enjoy not not participating in the hobby yeah yeah I think so yeah. so um, Jared and I have agreed to do whatever it takes to convert Jason Leon to a cyclist I think that will never happen <laughs> um, yeah, there are many ways to to uh, to enjoy company of other men oh yeah without. but like like your sport of hugging each other like jujitsu yeah jujitsu uh, that, that, that's my game um, so okay so now are you going to buy new bikes you're going to cycle oh, are you going no, 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 to no. planning a, I know people like to plan convoy like they want to cycle to they want to cycle all the way to like Russia or something hey, or sometimes no. we cycle for 100k's and then we do it in a group of maybe 4-5 people so I don't like to do okay not that I don't long. like I don't dare to ride with a group of 40 people yeah sounds dangerous yeah it it, it, it is because I did it once sorry I did it twice Twice there was a crash. And you, you cycle 100 kilometers, do you then cycle 100 back? Oh, it's uh, no, la, so it's 50 there, 50 back. Right. The most I've done is 120 in one go. Do you think cyclists who cycle on the road, they should pay road tax? No. Why? Why, <laughs> Why should cyclists pay road tax? Because you're using the road. I know. Mm. But you see, we are not in any way heavy enough to create a pothole. Fair enough. Uh, no, are we, no, are we in some way emitting gas that would kill the environment. The only gas is the gas that comes out of my asshole. But that's, that's, that's okay. Oh, okay, that's okay, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah biodegradable. So you yeah. see, we, I, I don't think we have to pay road tax. That's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> the whole of Malaysia is not agreeing with you right now. Yeah, yeah I know. But Re- it's, Remember, remember uh, who else? You know, remember Kari Zemaludin made cycling a bit popular? Yeah. Because during the MCO, he cycled. Yeah. Then, then he... Then he <laughs> Knocked into a, he ran over a pothole. Yep. Then he fell down. Then yep. he, oh, you got scratched. And then after that, the pothole was refixed immediately. Yep. That's amazing. La. No uh, other, no one else has that power to fix pothole immediately. I think that was a PR stuff for one of the bike brands. <laughs> <laughs> but, he, but he crashed though. Yeah, he, uh, yeah of course he oh, was. But the bike was okay. The bike was okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, right. He's a politician, bro. He's an orchestrated crash. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow, that's wow, fantastic. wow, wow, wow. Mm. Uh, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so that's, that's, that's interesting, you know. Uh, I wish all cyclists uh, the very best of luck and uh, hope you all don't get injured. But actually, I saw your set on on how you sh- shared on cyclists. It's actually quite funny. I'm not going to lie. No, that is funny. But, and uh, I hope it's good. Like, it's, so it's, it's just relatable because the thing is, I think what he talks about cyclists is just like the preliminaries a cyclist goes through before finding their true, like, you know, uh, like when you get into a hobby, right? Yes. You don't expect how you uh, do this hobby the same as how other people do it. You'll find your comfort zone. Right. Yeah. But so. then how do all these serious cyclists, what do they do when they lose all their friends? Lose literally? <laughs> <laughs> because of what? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, actually, to be honest, the sport is kind of slowing down now because, you know, everybody's back oh, to work. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, I think cycling for... For exercise, like you know, in tamans or parks, like like in you know, like in Amsterdam, yeah, where everyone is use cycling for as a mode of transportation. I think yeah. that's that's pretty great. But cycling as a exercise is actually quite good. Right? If you can run, why can't you cycle? Yeah, it, no. To me, I think it's just dangerous. Oh, okay. because I think. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I have to agree with you on this. Mm-hmm. It is. It is the, dangerous. The the root of my fear is because uh, when I was a house no, when I was a medical student. Yep. I, uh, I, my first clinical day, like you go to the wards and you see his cases. Yes. Uh, my first day entering the wards in Penang General Hospital, I saw this guy and this guy, I couldn't describe him accurately enough, but he was in a motorcycle accident. Oh, damn. And he's, he, he's like, you know, a bit like, he's knocked out with pain, pain medication, but he's, he's like this entire forearm, right? Yeah. The skin is gone. Road rash. And you can, no, no, you can actually see his yeah. muscles. Oh. Like if you move his fingers, you can see them exposed. Okay. And so you read the case and say, what happened is this poor guy, he knocked over something. He then he 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 dived into the like a big longkang, a monsoon yeah. drain. Yeah. Thankfully he was he he survived. Yes. But what happened was when he crashed into the drain, the motorbike fell on him. Oh damn. And the exhaust, he, he was knocked out, but the exhaust pipe was, oh. So, so that was, that, and that was my first ever real patient that I saw. Okay. 
I'm like, oh my god, that's 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 that scary, yeah. you know. And then as you move on, like when I, mean, I became a house officer in the orthopedic wards, right? every motor, every accident victim is always a we call it a every MVA motor vehicle accident two wheeler. It's, uh, it's always it's always MB which is motorbike. Yep. Versus something else. All right. So there's like motorbike versus motorbike. Yep. <laughs> motorbike versus car. Oh. And as and as the night gets. You know, as you go further into the night, it gets weirder. Motorbike versus dog. <laughs> right? Motorbike versus tiang lampu. I'm not oh, kidding. Wow. And then the funniest one is motorbike versus question mark because the guy was drunk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always motorbike. It's always, always, always motorbike. And yeah. you see a normal guy on a motorbike, then he lose a leg or arm or, you know, whatever, paralyzed, or, uh, uh, skull fracture, whatever. So it, it's very, very dangerous. So yeah, the, the risk... Is higher. And reward for being on a motorbike in Malaysia is just so high. Yeah. Which is the same ish if you are on a bicycle and you cycle on the open road. I I grew up not uh, being told not to get on a motorbike because my brother got into a bike accident. Mm. He what happened was he was a pillion rider, and he wasn't even, he was not, he, was not, he was not even in control of the bike. Then uh, what happened was the front car jammed. The bike rammed the back. Oh my god! And he got through th- oh my god. two cars in front, and he landed through a windshield like Superman. It's quite cool. Yeah, he, he, he's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's still okay. Oh, oh still yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. And then when, when we found out because we, we went back, he was in the bed, and he was groaning in pain. And my mom like, "What the hell happened? I got into an accident. What kind of accident? Yeah. yeah. Then a uh, few fractured bones. Not not serious, but you know, that's where my mom told me never ever get on a motorbike. Yeah, 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 and that's where it like whatever it is. My daughter will never ever go on a motorbike, even though it's a joyride with her boyfriend. Mm. Uh, but along, cy- but cycling can uh. <laughs> Wait, Cycling with father, <laughs> you know, like the- uh, actually, mm. I don't even dare bring my daughter. You know how some cyclists, right? They put a baby chair on the bicycle. I, I will never I've do never that. I've never seen this. I've never seen. They yeah. do that. That's yeah, they scary, do that. Man, that's scary but, but 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 they do not shit. put it. They do not put it on race bikes. They put it on the normal commute bikes, which is obviously slower, slower, uh, built for steady. It's a balance, right? Yeah. You know, for uh, for my appetite of risk, you'll be surprised to know that I actually quite enjoy skydiving. Yeah. Skydiving has a, I would, I think, has a lower margin of error than cycling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, I hate to fucking say this, but it's true. The safety profile is higher. And then, you know, like, uh, when they do skydiving, there's a lot of precautions and safety measures that they take, they, that take place before you actually... Skydive. There's a there's three uh, backup pair, two backup parachutes. I think one. one there's right. one backup parachute. Then there's, no, there's one parachute. There's one backup parachute, and then the instructor is very well trained. And then they, every back nowadays, every modern skydiving pack has a altimeter. Ah, so at five thousand feet, it automatically deploys. If the one hasn't deployed, it will deploy the, the whatever the secondary shoot or whatever. Right. And like to be to if you go to a registered facility, like every you know you got you got to strap yourself to another guy. Yeah. <laughs> so the the tandem tandem skydiver he he himself must have done like one thousand solo jumps before he can go solo. Train yeah. Train as a tandem instructor and. There's so many things they do like when like when you see them when you when they deploy the shoot they would quickly check like my wife's instructor uh, he he was like your wife's instructor as yeah, in she no 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 she no the, the 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 guy that she dove down with oh I see I see so he when you, you can see in the video when when he deployed the shoot he actually took a few minutes to like check and see if the thing and he actually had to un no he had to unwind the yeah, yeah, yeah. Angle it a little bit. Yeah, you know. So it, it's it's really cool. So many things they have to do. You you can. You cannot pack your own parachute. Yeah, of course. Yes, you have to pack somebody. Uh, somebody you has pack to pack the shoot you use. Someone else must pack for you. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. cannot pack yourself. And so many, so many other things, lah. So I really find it quite safe. Oh yeah, my well, cycle is quite safe. So you know, before I ride, I pump my tires. Every you must pump every before every ride. Yeah, yeah. So well, I, I pump my tires. It's thin. I I charge my lights. I charge oh, my no. blinkers. You know, and, uh, so that cars can see. So you cycle at night, so. I. <laughs> Yeah, uh, only where the roads are bright, lah. You know where there's lights. And there's this thing called night cycling as well. It's quite fun. Uh, Have you heard of mountain biking, gravel biking? Yeah, I, I've heard that. Uh-huh. So whenever I sometimes I hike in Mount Mount Kiara and you and you they 
they will Bukit Kiara and ah. not Mount Kiara, Bukit Kiara, and they will pass by. Yes, they will say like four on the right, and then yeah. shoo, 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 shoo. they'll be like on your left, on your right, yeah. right there on your right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find them really annoying. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it, but <laughs> because they they cycle quite fast. Yeah, some do, but and I know that if they fall down and they break their leg, they'll ruin my hike. Oh, oh man! So I have to help now. <laughs> but, but but yeah, you should you should try cycling. Cycling is a very interesting sport. Yeah, a very nice community. Yeah, yeah. And every hobby, there is one or two fella that will spoil it for the community. One. Okay, like how, like how, like how? I see. Uh, like you know, like you know, you have great politicians, but you have one fella come out to say something wrong, then everybody generalizes politicians. Okay, okay. So so what has happened in the cycling community? Example, example. <laughs> I don't know exactly. I'm genuinely asking. Uh, okay, so like I think I've read before. Uh, so there's this thing called drafting, where if a cyclist wants to go faster, because when you are cycling, right, uh, the the biggest resistance in cycling, everybody wants to go fast, but, but the biggest resistance for a cyclist is your body, because basically wind is part of resistance. So when your body doesn't curl up in an arrow way, you will basically be slower, lah. You have to pull out more power for your legs to go faster. But if you basically, it's you know how uh, Malaysian drivers they like to go on the fast lane, then tiong a car close close. Uh huh. Yeah, because they want to overtake the car. Yes. But Malaysian cyclists they don't do that. They go close to the car, so there's no wind resistance. They do that so that they can go faster. Oh my mm, the god. The thing is, mm, this is a technique used by the professionals in the Tour de France to basically save your power output so that you can unleash your tank at the final sprint. So right. it's a so team you, it's a team sport. You let the front guy punch a hole through the air so you can Yes. yes okay, exactly. Okay, yeah. This also does uh, it also works for F1. F1 does this too. Mm. Team sport. So let me explain uh change your back. Sorry lah. Cyclists, pro cyclists lah, okay. They always have like four, five cyclists, six cyclists, and you're wondering like, wow, wow, what's this? Why do you need so many people? Isn't it one for all and one fella go all? Oh, no. It's a team effort. The team will always have to take care of the sprinter because the mm. sprinter is the one that basically gets the points at the end of the thing for the whole entire team. Okay, okay. So that's that. That's drafting. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. Happens in every sport. F1, racing, uh, even even running, like, but not so lah, running. So I have seen some videos where cyclists on the open road go and drive behind a lorry. What? Yeah. And 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 yeah, it's not not good. The thing is nothing happened to them, but because of that, every motorist is going to say this is uh, hazardous to the drivers because how are the, how the, how is the driver supposed the lorry driver. The lorry driver. Okay, number one, the lorry driver probably cannot see you, yeah. but the other cars behind you, they won't be able to judge what you're going to do next. Right. Right? You got no blinkers. You know, the only wow. the most you could do to highlight is put your right hand out that you're turning right or put your left hand out if you're turning left. So that's about it. So there is a video uh, going out. I think, I'm not sure whether the, those fellas were caught and under investigation oh for a road God. hazard. But yeah. And the thing is, not everyone does it. Just one in a yeah. million. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, and uh, every time we go for group rides, um, it's organ like uh, bicycle shops that organize group rides, right? They always have a safety car. Ah, yeah, okay. so the safety car is there to basically have tools, number one, first aid kit, and number two, block out ongoing traffic and divert traffic. That means they'll be the safety car. Like, Look, there's a peloton, they call it a peloton, a group of riders, it's a peloton. Uh, okay. There's a group of riders in front of us, overtake, we are here to protect the riders. And sometimes they are there to pace the riders, don't go too Wait, fast. How, how does the car divert traffic again? That means they, they, you, you, before the car basically goes head on and ram the cyclists, if they can't see the cyclists because they are so slim profile, there's a car behind them. Lah. You get what I mean? Oh. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. then like the car will then horn and tell the whole entire group, look, single file, don't don't be don't be idiots, okay? Uh, this is still an open road. It's uh, You have to basically give way to the motorists and give way to them lah, because they have to travel, right? You can't create a traffic jam just because you're a cyclist. So there are there are groups like that that do does that as well. So of course, there are more, there are a lot of these groups, but sometimes you do get some of the groups that are new, fresh, don't know the rules, don't know the etiquette of cycling, just go out open road straight away on, the, on their first try. And then mm. a lot of things happen lah. Mm. But yeah, so far, you know, hopefully one day Dr. Jason Leung will join cycling. Yeah, stay safe, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, so you are touring again. I yes. saw. Um, so a lot of people actually ask me, is the is the tour the same show as the Netflix one? No, no, it's not. Netflix, uh, the one that co that comes out to this midnight tonight, yeah, uh, seventh of February, is a show I shot last year. Yeah. So the show for Brain Drain is a completely different new hour, which I started writing since September. Right. So I started writing, working on it. Hopefully, hopefully it's good. I think it's okay, and people will come and watch lah. So that one, 
I'm going to uh, Penang, KL, Kuching, Melaka, JB. Mm-hmm. Uh, my biggest show is in Singapore, Esplanade, wow. Esplanade Theatre. And then I'm going to uh, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Surabaya and Jakarta. Um, uh, Surabaya is a new one I've never been. And then I'm, I'm going to Australia also. So Perth, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide. And for the first time, Auckland in New Zealand. Uh, we're firming up dates for, Amer- uh, for New York, LA, Ke- uh, Toronto and Vancouver. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to London again. So it's a, it's a, it's a pretty big tour. Uh, nothing close to uh, Nigel Ng's or Ronnie Chang's, but uh, I, I, I like to emulate this guy. So I like to tour extensively now. So this is uh, my most ambitious tour. La. Wow. It's, it, it's, it's the, 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 long, the longest and the, the widest tour I've, uh, I've, I've, I've had. La. So Estimated I'm, profit, but maybe 10, 15 million USD. Yeah, 10, 15 million USD, sure. Okay. Sure, yeah. yeah. Off... <laughs> Which which oh, off a thirty five city <laughs> uh, to a yeah it's good oh, enough, to yeah. fifteen million wow how many offshore accounts do you have now let's see uh, let's, <laughs> okay. let's say it's ten million yeah that means uh, for every <laughs> for every city I do I have to make four hundred thousand U S dollars yeah how so, do- yeah don't be so ambitious lah four thousand ringgit lah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Four hundred thousand ringgit. Yeah. Each ticket is back so max. Let's say each ticket is four hundred. Wow. I have to sell a thousand tickets at four hundred for every show. Never mind, bro. Just go economy to scale. Like, drop your ticket price twenty yeah, bucks. Then that's maybe true. like you know have like uh, ten thousand people go to your show. That's like that's the that's the MLM slash feng shui route. Yeah, you know, I'm giving a feng shui talk. Ten thousand people come. Yeah, MLM come. Yeah, sell, sell it to a company. Like, yeah. oh, this is for your tax write off. Uh, buy tickets to my show. Yes, yes. Ah, and yes. That's why I come to podcast. I used to promote my Netflix shows. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and and, and, and uh, what do you call it? And, and my tour. Yeah, hire me lah to you know <laughs> push buttons, or turn on the likes, open the curtains. Yeah, I, I'm thinking that's a good idea. Sell off the tour to a company as a tax write off. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna figure that out. Okay, sorry, you didn't hear it here. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Money laundering. <laughs> hey. Hey, 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 allegedly, yeah. But then, are you are you going? So, is, I'm, I'm, I'm here's my question mm. like, a lot of uh, stand up comedians, I, I, I look up to Ronnie, and I've said this to you all the time. I always, you sometimes you think I'm joking, but sometimes I, 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 I seriously mean it. So, when are you going to Hollywood? Uh, so I actually have gotten my uh, my O1 visa, oh. which is the uh. I'm not kidding. It's called Alien of Extraordinary Ability. Yeah, yeah. It, oh, it's just and and uh, I can work for a few years in America. So that's that's why I'm doing shows in New York, LA. Uh, why did they call you Alien? I do, because you know, I'm not from them. Huh? Okay. I'm not from um, yeah. So that and also I do uh, and I'm planning to spend a bit more time in New York. Do the do the gigs there. So uh, will your accent change or not? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, cool. And I think my. Uh, my one of my goals this year is to actually write and produce, at the minimum, a sitcom pilot. You know, am I involved? Uh, yeah. How much you charge for shooting and uh, producing? Uh, it depends. Is it going to be on Hollywood? Friend, friend, price free, right? So uh, yeah, can, yeah, can, yeah, yeah, I can. Anything. Hey, fucker! I did a friend, friend one for you. Okay, no, no, no. We, we work with it. We've done, we've done some stuff together. <laughs> see, see the word fucker come out so fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, we did some pretty good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, yeah, I want so the shooting part. So we did some pretty good stuff. So much so that he did not hire my company to shoot his Netflix special in Singapore, Esplanade. Hello, you got your, your company never shoot spe- comedy specials before. Okay, true. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Okay, okay, so I give you that. Right, I give you right, that. Right, yes, right. yes, true. <laughs> you flop. Yes. Yeah, so that's my goal actually to sh- to write and produce something that can be internationally appealing. Yeah, that can be you know, and I think we got all. I mean, not me, but we got all the talent here, all the prerequisite, uh, the prerequisite requirements to have a fucking great sitcom. Yeah, I just need to the, put the, it together. Yeah. But then, okay, when you do the sitcom, right? Here's my question. Yes, sir. You're gonna be doing it for the international audience or for the Malaysian audience first? I don't know. I think I would like to aim for international. Yep. But that does see yeah. The, the, that question itself is a bit binary, right? Yep. Is it for Malaysian audience or for local audience? But mm-hmm. why can't it be both? Yes. Something that is appealing internationally can also appeal locally. Right? Like for like let's say mm-hmm. Avengers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but, and something that is local can also be appealing internationally. Like our one of our, of our local films which are which is um Recognize outside of Malaysia, Sepet. Yeah, that did well yes. overseas. And I'm sure there are a lot. More, I'm just I don't I'm blanking out. But there are other movies which, if you, 
something that's authentically Malaysian doesn't have to just appeal to Malaysians. Yes. Mm. It, it should be able to speak uh, borders. Uh. Yeah, this language will not be a barrier <coughs> anymore. Yeah, create, uh, like, okay, there's this, <coughs> there's this particular sitcom that I really love. Uh, it's called Men Like Mobin. Yeah. You, you I've told you before. Yeah. It's on Netflix. And it's about life for a brown person in, I think, Birmingham. Yeah. It is so local. It is so about Birmingham life. The accent is so thick. Yeah. Right? But it, and it's funny. But it's funny. And I love it. I'm from all the way in Malaysia. I have no idea about their customers. It's internationally but, recognized. But it is so unapologetically local. So you yeah. don't have to you don't have to choose. If you do if you if if it's good, it's good lah. Okay. If it's good, it's good. Do you think that Malaysians are the only one who is uh, thinking more like thinking that oh only West is best. If anything produced Malaysians is not good. I mean, yeah, I think that is a problem. I think that's true. The the acceptance is quite low here. Especially for the English market. For the Chinese market, the Malay market is great. Oh, I see. Yeah. Really, really great. For, yeah. for English market, it's not. Huh? A bit tougher because no, but, they always... But when was the last good locally produced English movie? I'd like to say my movie. <laughs> but so, long yeah, ago. So, so long ago. Very long ago. I'm, I'm not sorry. I'm not going to say that my movie is great, but you hardly see any English, locally English produced films being number one, uh, promoted heavily with marketing spend on mainstream, uh, Astro and whatever not, it's always Malay films and Chinese films. And mm. uh, sadly, English films, very, very, very sad, la, hard, la, hardly. La. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 yeah, I don't want to write a movie. I don't want to write a, like a sitcom, sitcom, la, sitcom. A sitcom. But yeah. I it, think it, the last sitcom that I really enjoy until today, I still sometimes just watch is Kopitiam. Yeah. Kopitiam is great. So, so that is like, it's like, it's like both. Uh, achievement and also a sad reflection. Yeah. That the best sitcom we have is the sitcom 20 years ago. Yeah. That is sad because it should be the last five years. It's but, so, but, it's so but iconic, but man. It's still the only English sitcom that is worth watching today. Yeah. Which is very sad. You know, it's worth, a, it's achievement and it's a sad re- re- reflection. Yeah. yeah. A lot I mean, of, I wish there were more. A lot of people from that sitcom are still making waves today. Douglas name one yeah, of them. Of course, uh, yeah. Lina Teo, yeah, yeah, she yeah. went out to do Nat Geo. Yeah. Um, and, and Joanna Bessie. Uh, you know, they're all still doing things today. Uh, people will still remember. It's so iconic. So I, I have never watched, okay, the next one I've seen is Pua Chukang. La. Pua Chukang. But the thing is, I'm not sure whether Pua Chukang appeals to other countries apart from Malaysia and Singapore. Yeah. La. And even then, like, what, what, what is the, even in Singapore, what is the most recent great Singaporean English sitcom? Don't have. Don't have. Yeah. So like, do you think something like Pua Chukang will transcend borders? Like, would it be big in Korea? Would it be big in America? Would it be big? In, okay. Not just America, but in the America, Asian American community. You know what I mean? So like, how do we find our footing in the international stage you know what I mean yeah how the answer is uh, we, let's find out yeah let's find out together tough, together, tough, right? together you and I you, you devote your entire office <laughs> to creating something for me yeah. uh, at a very low price we, we call Uncle Ronnie hey can you give us <laughs> can you give us consultation for he, free yeah, he's too busy yeah, yeah he's he too is. the fuck is too busy yeah dude he's he's awesome we always he's, talk he's, about he's also, he's also he's, I think he's also shooting something uh, in Hollywood I think so it's great he's, he's doing lots of stuff la. His, his, his career is amazing yeah, I hope to see you on Jimmy Kimmel. I hope to see you on uh, on the okay, I forgot his name, but yeah, some Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel, Fallon. Yeah, Stephen, on the Jimmy. Stephen Colbert. Yeah, Stephen Colbert, and I hope you mention my name. Yes. Yeah. We go together. Uh, no, 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 no. It's okay. I don't have to go. Don't worry. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to steal your thunder. Just go there. Just, just mention my name, Kennedy. Can, can, can. For free. I don't charge me. Can, can, can. Yeah, I can pay for your flights for this special. <laughs> E- economy <laughs> flexible hashtag bless because uh, ah yeah yeah that will be your biggest flex sh- you know? show off my economy class flex, <laughs> but it's to Hollywood like. <laughs> no your biggest flex one day right if you ever make it to Hollywood will be you, you, you should always use your hashtag bless if you ever get on like I Kimmel yeah. that would be so funny it would be like a full circle like yeah you know what this is the biggest that's flex. why someone like Michelle Yeoh is a so inspirational. She is la. She's, she's at the top right now. Pinnacle, 61 years old. 60 years old? 61, 60, 60 years old. My yeah. God. Killing it la. She is. I'm going to say it here right now. She's going to win. She's going to win the Oscar. She's going to win the Oscar. She's Michelle going to Yo, win the Oscar. She is going to win the Oscar. Hands down. The movie, whether or not it wins best best movie, I don't know. But Michelle Yeoh is going to win the best actress Oscar. Who Who is that movie going up against her? Uh? Uh, there's a movie called T. A. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Wow. Is it a Malaysian director? Uh, sorry, is it an, is it an American director? Right. Obviously, everything we, everywhere, we all at once. I think so. It it's doesn't it. matter because Michelle Yeoh is in it. 
Yeah, the win. film is automatically Malaysian, like how we always claim. Yeah. Hey, but what's your your opinion on that? I think Broad Polare came out one day and he made this statement uh, talking about how that the industry should not be. I can't remember what he he mentioned. Uh, oh, I know. It, it, he said something along Malay. There's no reason to be proud of Michelle Yeoh's achievements. Let right? me, let me, let me, let me. Wait, wait, wait. I have it here. I'm gonna go to my archive, and because because I retweeted it, and then uh, a lot of people in the in yeah. the industry kind of resonated with it. I'm gonna snap my fingers so that the producers know when to edit this shit out. <laughs> this is so long. Yeah. Uh, there, there is, there is uh, nothing for our industry to be proud of because she is not from our industry. It is true that she was born in Malaysia, but she is a Hong Kong actor. However, Michelle's nomination inspires us, especially young people, to pack your bags and leave because there are always opportunities elsewhere. Yeah. First of all, I really respect Bron. I hope one day I get to work with him, at least to share a scene, a scene with him. Yeah. Uh, he was great in Tabai Dai Langit. And, uh, I first saw him in Ola Bola. Freaking amazing, dude. Uh, he was the newscaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I loved him in Fly By Night. He, he played oh, yes. Oh, yo. yes, 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 yes. He played the villain so well. <sighs> so, uh, he comes on screen, he's so scared, you know. Zahe Omar, right, the director. Yeah, but he, he, in, in Braun also can do comedy. He, he, yeah. He, yeah, so good. He's so good. Uh, okay. Bro, uh, unfortunately, the, the thing is, a lot of the media outlets, they they, they made the headlines. Um, Braun, Braun says, there's no reason for Malaysia to be proud. No, that kind of nonsense. Yeah. Um, the, the, what he's saying is 1,000% sniper accurate laser focused true. Mm -hmm. Because you see, Michelle Yeoh, um, she achieved her success as an actor outside of Malaysia because she would never have achieved the same success in Malaysia in the Malaysian local film industry. Yep. Because our film industry is riddled with problems Chiefly censorship, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, no one is going to fund a movie about a Chinese mother coming to terms with her gay daughter. Mm. No one is going to film that movie here. Yep. You know? So, and, and I think Bron is trying to highlight that in this, in this country, there's not enough uh, support and a focus towards growing talent. Mm -hmm. Right? They are talented people, but they are not, they are not supported. Right? For example, nowadays, I've heard, I've read, movie they may, may, may make movies here yep. they cast insta famous people yeah they cast in influencers not me <laughs> I never get casted <laughs> I have to cast myself yes. if I'm making my own films <laughs> that's how fucking sad it is you yeah. know so it's sad because you don't cast the right person you cast the most famous and not even if you say you cast the fame uh, the most famous actress or actor I can understand yes yes they're yes. not even actors or actresses they don't know how to act but yeah. you cast them because they have 200,000 followers on, on Facebook. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know, that one. And then like, you know, in terms of funding and grants and support, it, it's nowhere there, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, recently I read somewhere along the lines of like there was a, okay, there's a government grant to... To, to fund the creative, right? To fund... One billion, right? New movie. No, no, this is before that. Uh. New movie. Oh, to get, to get listed in... Uh, to get sent to... Foreign, ah, foreign foreign film, film festivals, festivals. Yeah. and then this local guy said he wants to he wants to why never why never list his films oh because you must go through the certain channel to like basically help help out cronies or whatever yeah so like then how are you gonna this you cannot grow it, it cannot freaking grow the the ecosystem climate here very bad for earnest uh filmmakers yeah which is very which is very sad so uh yeah come back to the question Bron again, was 1,000% accurate. That's the truth. People don't like to hear, but that's the truth, man. Yeah. You know, and I don't see this thing improving because there will always be ridiculous censorship laws. Mm -hmm. We are a country that will ban uh, Thor, will ban Buzz Lightyear. Oh, yeah. Will ban Beauty and the Beast. Uh, won't show, uh, what? Uh, the Prince of Egypt because it's about Moses. We, we, we won't show all of this. Because of ridiculous censorship, mm -hmm. so how can art grow when there's no when there's so much censorship? Like, we will not make we will you are not going to come up with our own Oscar winning parasite. Yeah. Because Korea has quite liberal censorship laws, where I think they they have actively discouraged uh, censorship. Yeah, but uh, that's 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 how it is in Malaysia. I hope. I, I hope things improve. And that's why it'd be nice if I can write my own sitcom and something. Realistically, new. realistically, do you think it will improve in this generation or not? This generation. Yeah, in in our lifetime. I think. Okay, I want to be optimistic. I you feel mean, you mean the art scene. Yeah, 
I feel it will, but it takes one bloody good film or creation or something to suddenly just explode kau kau worldwide recognition. Then all of a sudden, you know, there needs to be kind of like a community <coughs> or a yeah. or a ministry that governs this. Yeah, and see, there's a lot of people who have the misconception that oh, after Parasite became uh, one best movie for uh, one the Oscar for best movie, then suddenly all these K dramas popped up. It's actually different. It's actually the other way around. Yeah, there's always been a lot of support <laughs> for Korean the Korean film industry, and you must understand when the movie was made is made by someone with a lot of experience, lots of talent, lots of uh, credibility and the actors were all amazing. Yeah. Right? So we have all that. Mm-hmm. Huh? But what happened behind the scenes was this movie also had people supporting it, pushing it to Cannes, pushing it to at the Oscars. You need people, not the creatives themselves, but people behind the scenes to fund the marketing campaign for your Oscars. The PR campaign, the, the PR marketing campaign. campaign. There's a campaigning season. You have to actually campaign yeah. To show the movie to the people who are going to vote for it, and yeah. you know, to who decide to get nominated. So, there's a whole behind the scenes machinery. Yeah. To push this parasite, or whatever, to become best movie. And the government right? supported that. I remember yeah. reading about it. it the, the, the 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 former the person who spearheaded the campaign behind the scenes used to work in the whatever, like, whatever. I think he started this road to the Oscars, right? I think right? it's a woman. Um, it's a yeah. woman who, who, who then used all her contacts from working in the government to yeah. push this. So it's so it's the other way. You, we, we cannot wait for a movie from Malaysia to magically win the Oscars. Yeah, we need... You must have start. You must start the process now. You know? So, so it will improve. But if you want to say, when will Malaysia win an Oscar for best film? I don't think the process has started yet. They they will win through a proxy. <laughs> <laughs> through through Mi- Michelle Yeoh, Ronnie Chang, Nigel yeah. Ng's movie, Henry Golding, all uh, oh, 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 they're Malaysian. Yeah. But, but yeah, like, like what Bron says, like what, what Bron says is not a Malaysian industry uh, movie. But it's okay. But they will go on Jimmy Kimmel, and when Jimmy Kimmel asks them, they, "Where are you from?" They wave the flag. I'm from uh, this country called Malaysia. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. 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 So that's exactly what Bron is saying. You know? Yeah. Uh, so so if we really want a homegrown, you know, Malaysian talent, uh, come for my show because uh, I'm from the Malaysian com- <laughs> comedy circuit, and I'm going abroad. Hey, watch my Netflix special. And uh, so happens, it's called Brain Drain. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm, I'm gonna so. Quite serendipitously, I'm gonna talk about Michelle Yeoh in my special. Oh, okay. The, 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 the brain day. Yeah. Hey, can tell me a joke now? No la. No kidding la. Yeah, that's the one thing I know. Stand up comedians hate. My tickets are very cheap. So how cheap? JasonLeong.my. Ninety ringgit to hundred fifty ringgit. Come oh, on. fucking expensive, man. How much your bike again? It's quite cheap, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> your bike can buy two hundred of my. Oh, ah, music on! <laughs> music on! Ah, the ending song, damn shock, damn nice, uh, yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm, hey, proud of you, lah, Jason. I have to say. I'm very proud of you too, and all the money. Freaking man. crazy, you know. You're just fucking milking it year after year. I just milking. See, yeah, no, serious. From making videos when we were stuck at home, oh, yeah, to yeah. selling out shows everywhere, to going international, to I having your Netflix special twice. Yes. Okay, it's a big achievement because I remember before you had your first Netflix special, you'd be like, "I wish to have." That's my goal, and now you have two. Yes. So how the hell the hell do you top that? Coming on this podcast and yeah. then telling people to come to my shows. Shut up, lah! I'm not. I don't get exclusivity of this. You went on other people's podcasts before you came on mine. JasonLeon.my <laughs> Okay, Jason, Jason, before we go, you have about 20 seconds to plug yourself. Go, 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 go. Uh, buy tickets to my shows at JasonLeon.my and watch my Netflix special uh, 9th February, Ride With Caution. Thank you. I love Gene Boy. Yes, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, go and watch the show. I, I, whenever this comes out, uh, it, look, we recorded this on, what, today's what? On the 8th of uh, February. It comes out midnight, so 9th of February. So if you listen to this after the 9th, yeah, just go watch it on Netflix and tag Jason Leong and said, be a cyclist today. All right? <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. We'll speak to you guys next time. Bye-bye.